This time the quick speed shop, I'm going to try to fix the bottom of the grill for the Model A Hot Rod Shop Truck. I'm a professional, don't try this at home. Alright, here it is. This is the grill shell. It's back from the sandblaster. I primed up the top of this here, but the bottom I left in bare metal because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. This is a 33-34 Ford uh, pickup commercial grill, and it's all rotten on the bottom here. Look at that. Rusty all the way around. And so now we got to fix it. And I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet, but we're going to figure it out. Over here i got assorted bits and pieces. I've got some tubing or random bends in it. More tubing random bends in it. Got some uh, three-quarter inch electrical uh, EMT conduit, which bends very easily. I have a feeling that we're going to end up bending a new bottom up out of this because it bends so easy. And then uh, I'm also thinking about raising, essentially uh, sectioning the bottom of this about an inch just to get it up away from the ground because it's only about four and a half inches off the ground when it's on a truck. And that's really, really low. And if I ever hit it, it would, it would destroy the whole bottom half of this really nice grill shell. And, and these aren't cheap. I got this one at a, at a deal at Hershey last year, and uh, these aren't cheap. I paid three hundred fifty dollars for this, which is, you know, a pretty decent deal on a, on a grill with this nice straight teeth and all that. So, if it was a thirty-two grill shell, it would have been you know eight hundred dollars. But they're they're not cheap, so we're gonna fix it. Another option I had is I got this out of the junkyard. It's off of Worthington tractor, which you don't know what Worthington's are, you look them up on the internet, but basically they took uh, Model A, Model T, and like 32 up to 34 Ford uh, truck chassis and cut them down and essentially made uh, uh, tractors out of them for like uh, towing uh, gang mowers on golf courses and things like that. And this one was a 1932 Ford. I couldn't find the Worthington tractor, but I found this in a box truck. And obviously you can tell by the top that it was laying upside down in the swamp, but the bottom of it is mint. It's a little crooked, but I really don't want to cut this up and use the bottom of this. I could use the bottom with the fix that grill shell, but I really don't want to do that. I'd rather just keep this as a wall hanger, or if I get a, a 32 top, I can fix this grill shell and have a, a 32 commercial grill shell. So I'm not going to cut this up. I'm just going to go back over here on the wall. So what the problem is, I got a whole bunch of rust right along the bottom edge of this. Um, there is a piece of tin that was welded to the back side, and I think it made a little splash apron here, which has since rusted away. But pretty much anywhere this bare metal is, this thing is completely paper thin and full of holes all the way around. It's almost up into the grill bars. And uh, I've you know notched this, which I've got to finish trimming, but this is for the channel job on the front of the truck. So essentially the front cross member is right here and the frame rails come out right here. So this thing hangs down about that far below the front cross member. But a three quarter inch electrical conduit is pretty much the right shape and right size to do this and this stuff bends real easy so I think I might form a new chin out of that so the first step I'm gonna try to figure out if we can bend this and form it up on the existing piece here get a get a nice matching shape then I'm gonna take my uh, cutoff blade I'm gonna cut off this crank hole and we're gonna raise the whole crank hole up to keep the original look and then cut free all the grill bars here along here out the shirt then cut this off and essentially raise everything up an inch and then weld that the tubing up back in here and make a new bottom and then tie all the grill bars back in. Aha! It's on my Harbor Freight uh, bottle jet mandrels here. It's in the quarter. Here we go. Three quarter. So we'll use this for the condo. We'll put this in the vise and I should be able to just push by hand and bend over this and uh, start forming her up. So it's, it's, well, it's moldy in here. Let's go ahead and do that. Now I should, in theory, just be able to bend this by hand. It shouldn't take that much. Oh, yeah, right. Gotta get her going a little bit. Man. Let me go and look at the grill and see how we're doing. I can use leverage to get way over here and pull it out. Oh, there we go. 
seen a problem already. See this is bunching up just a little bit on here on the back. I don't like that. Because this isn't the tightest bend we gotta make. I might have to get a three-quarter inch conduit bender. I have a half inch one. I know it won't fit in there and I know I got a three-quarter inch one somewhere. I just can't locate it at this time. Yeah, this ain't gonna fit in there. Ain't gonna fit in there, son of a gun. All right, good news, I found my bender. This is a cool one. It's a combination half inch, three quarter inch EMT conduit bender. So now we can get our bend on. So I've been practicing. This is the first piece I made over in the vise with the kinked bottom part, but I've been working on it, trying to just figure out um, what I gotta do here. And I've, I've got the shape pretty much figured out. I bent up the good piece here, the second piece, with a good center center bend, and I'm starting to to work this in. But I wanted to figure out where the where I needed to bend it to put the put the corner radiuses in. And I'm not good with the math on the MT conduit bender because I don't run conduit maybe like once or twice a year. So I'm trying to figure out the take ups and all that, and just kind of cheat it up, sneak up on it. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here with the shape. Trying to get the same same little arch action right there between the second that came out pretty good. That's where the rubber meets the road. I think I when I did this, let's see, I got two is gonna be here. So I gotta roll this right around. Up there. Oh. Hold on here. Ow, oh, nuts. Shoot! Screwed that up. Look, kinked it there. I don't know how I did that. Dang it! Let's look at it. I know what it was. I, I tried bending it in this double kick here, but pretty similar halves here. Uh, one's bent more than the other. I overbent that one. Maybe I underbent the other one. But I'll stand up welding these two chins together. We'll make one here. Actually, this one, yeah, this needs to get bent just a little bit more. There we go. It's a lot better. So basically, Got two sides to use for now and have to weld them together. Okay, we're doing good now. I've slowly been trimming up the ends of these. And got it pretty much where it's got to be um, chin wise here. It's like a delicate balancing act, but the thing, the thing's looking real good. It looks like I can replicate the bottom of the grill shell nice. There we go. Yeah, I can just fab up a whole new grill shell this way. What I have to do is line this up best I can and mark where I got to cut. Um, let's see here.
gonna mark where I'm gonna cut because I'm gonna lay lay this new piece up inside the old piece. So I gotta mark on the bottom where I want to cut. Try to get it symmetrical the best I can. All right, well, I'm a little nervous here to cut this, but I've made some provisions. I put a piece of all thread across the bottom of the sheet metal to hold the bottom of the, the grill tight. And I've made some uh, templates here just to keep track of my grill bars out of cardboard. And I uh, went and sanded the ground and sanded down the uh, chin piece here, so that's ready to go. I think what I'm going to do is get a brand new cutoff wheel. I'm going to zing this, the crank hole out first and then just start cutting across the, the bars and see where it goes. First time for everything? Let's try it. some more over here in the corners to get the slip down up in here but it doesn't look too bad I guess all right <clears throat> all right this got real precarious I had to uh, tack it I couldn't really film a lot because I was trying to get this thing lined up and didn't want distractions but basically look I've got this tacked in here and here's the uh, crank hole just that's gonna go here and move up here but look at this this looks awesome BAM can you see it Look at that. It's coming out good. I've just got it tacked on here. I did a, uh, I did a couple of plug welds where it's going to give us some strength up through here through the thin section. But now I'm just going to take the marker and my, my, uh, my uh, what do you call it, my uh, cardboard template I made. I'm going to mark out where these grill bars got to go and just real carefully tack them all up on here. And it uh, took me a whole bunch of time. You see all this black marker on here. I had to... Uh, mark each one, fit it, and grind each one meticulously by hand, which took about an hour to get all these dialed in. But now uh, they should be all set, ready to go, so I can mark it out here and then slowly tack these on here. There's where the bottom was originally, so it took about probably an inch and a half or so off the bottom of the grill. It just give me a little bit more clearance. You can see uh, This is all Swiss cheese here, so it's it's coming out good on the back side. You can see here, I went and I notched the uh, the conduit. This is where the cross member comes through, so it's real tight. But up here, I'm gonna have a plug weld up, so it'll give a little double wall strength up into here. And I also drilled a hole in the bottom of this because water will get in here, and they'll let the water out down here at the bottom. But I think it's coming out good. It's the first time I've ever done something like this on, on a piece like this. So it ought to it ought to work out all right. I think. I mean, I'm not building a, a hundred thousand dollar show car, but I'm going to be able. If I had a TIG welder, this would be a lot nicer. You could you could TIG. I've got to get the TIG set up for my Miller 215. 
but if I had a TIG, I could I could TIG these and hardly get any weld on. The MIG welder's hard because it makes a lot of, uh, you know, material. The TIG would be the hot setup for fixing this grill, but I'm going to work with what we got, and I'm going to slowly just start plug welding and fitting and welding this and weld it up here. I'm just gonna weld all these from the back side up, and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the uh, crank hole here in a second. So let me do these. You can come right back. Pinch the uh, grill bars down so they're gonna slip up inside the other grill bars, and then I've trimmed the bottom here. I just gotta get her in place and hold it and tack it. I'm gonna eyeball this up centered. That looks about good. Hit it right in the center. Here we go. And it's really thin. It's really thin there. Down my shirt. Ow, that hurt. Well, bam, there we go. It's precursorly welded up here. We've got a lot of grinding and hand filing and cleaning up to do, but it came out pretty good and it's actually a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought. I've been putting this off because I was really scared of it. Didn't want to ruin this grill shell, but a little few hours of monkeying around with this and just a little careful planning and it came out pretty good. It's an inch and a half shorter than it was before. It looks really good on the front of the truck and uh, nice and strong. It appears to be nice and straight and I guess that's a win. Boom. Bam. So I'll be cleaning it up and all that and uh, it's going to be painted flat black. I'm going to do the insert green to match some of the other green ac accents on the truck. But i got a lot of uh, metal work here to do a little bit of hand filing and stuff. But I'm happy with the way it came out. And I think it's going to be awesome. So that's how you chop a early Ford grill shell, I guess. And one more step done on the Model A hot rod shop truck. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts. Tell your friends. And as always, we'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop, ruining vintage early Ford parts.